pattern. So we have specifically followed up some kind of a methodology. So in this context, paradigm is nothing but a, a methodology. So let's understand what is programming paradigm. So the programming paradigm is nothing but a, a fundamental style of computer programming or we can say it is the computer programming technique which is going to define that how the structure and the basic element of a program is going to be built up. Now in the C what you have seen so let's call in the C how it is going to define the structure. So in C the first thing the, the first thing that we need uh, we need to we need to write it down is being called as the has include stdio.h because it is what is going to define the declaration of the function called as printf and also with the scanf. Then second thing you always need to write a main function because main is the function which is going to act as a entry point into the program itself. So that is why so this is what has been called as a how the structure has been how it has been how it has been structured and what are the basic elements of the computer program which is going to be built it up while some programming language strictly follow a single paradigm others may draw concept from more than once now on the third point so let's call it, i have defined a function called as main okay so in the main function what we can write we can write something integer main then the void also we can write that means the main function does not take any input but we wanted to write a program in which it has to take some argument during the runtime so in this case what we will write we will write a another variation of the main that is integer main then integer argc then character star arg argv so let me just write it down what i have spoken of now so integer main then integer argc then character star argv this is what it is so have you uh, encountered this kind of main function in c no sir okay so essentially so let's call suppose when you are going to run the program so this is what you will write now suppose we wanted to check some whether any parameter has been passed here so let's call one of the parameter which you are going to pass something called as a a file dot let's call that file then in this case what is going to check so we are going to check here whether the number of arguments into your program is being more or even more than one so this is what is the way we can also write a main function here so that is what it is trying to tell so while some programming language follows a single paradigm others may draw concept from more than one itself okay this is what it is and then what are the different types of programming paradigm there are basically four types one is being the first one is being called as the monolithic programming so which is going to emphasize on finding a specific solution then the second one is being called as the structured programming so it primarily focus on the module so the c language what you have said studied and the various program that you might have written in c so basically you have written a multiple functions so let's call integer the main function which you have written it first then followed by let's call suppose you wanted to take input from the keyboard then we will write something called as a function called as a input then some some information which has to be flush it out into the console that means it has to be displayed as a output then in such a cases also we are going to write something called as a, a display function so consider this each of this function is being treated as a some kind of a module itself then the next one is the procedural oriented programming one so in the procedure oriented programming one the emphasis is being given on to the algorithms so while you are going to study the data structure and the algorithms so you will be given much more detail or you are the faculty who is being taking the data structure and the algorithm so he or she is going to discuss 
various algorithm pertaining to how to represent a data structure itself so i'm not going to discuss much more i mean into penetrate into the algorithm because the hook is to understand one programming language and that is why the last programming paradigm which has been come across which is being called as the object oriented program programming so in this object oriented programming paradigm the emphasis is being given on to the classes and also with the object so that means in the earlier one so in c you might have created a structure so let's call struct employee then you might have created some member variables in the similar fashion we can also create something something called as a, a class class here and then we can from the once the class has been successfully declared then we can create a object of the class and using the object we can call the various methods which is been defined within the class itself okay so these are the four programming paradigm any questions till this point of time are there any questions till this point of time yes yes sir okay. so third point of the programming paradigms uh, can i explain what so the third point of uh, programming paradigm so this is the one which we are again going to discuss it so let's call what is meant by the monolithic programming what is meant by the structure procedure and the procedure oriented one we will discuss it so this is just to give you a highlight of it so till this point of time are you clear on the the basic highlight at a very high level overview it is being clear on what is meant by the programming paradigm and what are the four kind of a the, you know the classifier into this any questions no so got it sir okay so let's go into the monolithic programming so the monolithic programming they basically indicates that the program which is going to contain a single fog function for the large program what this means so this means is that so essentially so let's call you are being given a a problem statement and to derive a solution so it is going to write you and you need to write at least 500 lines of code then one way what we can do so we can write each and everything into the main function so that means taking the you know declaring the variable then if some prerequisite step needs to be done that is what also needs to be done in the main function then there is called if any input is being required from the user or maybe from a file system that then that mechanism need to be checked that need to be checked then some processing need to be initiated then finally if any type checking or any you know any certain kind of a checking needs to be done that is what also going to be done into the main function then finally it has to be return it back to the or something has to be displayed into the console or something has to be return up into the file system itself so that means so we can write everything into a single function itself and that is what the single function in the context of a c it is being called as the main main function itself so in this case the program is being not divided into part and hence it is what has been called as a, a monolithic program itself so let's call a simple example it suppose we wanted to find out or we wanted to compute the let's call the 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 the, the grades obtained by the students in such a case what is that so we have one entity which is being called as the student then the another entity which is being called as the academic so as a part of the monolithic one we are not splitting it across i mean the data into the student and into the academic rather what we are trying to do we are trying to come across with a structure which is going to cover each and everything and that is why it is being called as a monolithic one and the third point it is telling that it is a single thread of execution that means when the program sign increases it is what is going to leads to the inconvenience and it is going to be difficult to maintain so we will as a later point of time we will treat it as what is meant by the thread so essentially so whenever any 
any program which is going to be run so by default the operating system is going to create a thread that means the program is essentially going to run in a specific thread itself and hence the monolithic programming is basically operate under a single thread of execution then the program basically contain the jump state the jump statement in the c also we have seen that how to write a go to statement so in the similar fashion this monolithic programming also going to have the the go to statement and it primary responsible in transforming the control to any specified with the label so for an example so this is what has been written as a go to 50 so that means this is 50 is nothing but a label so the what the the compiler suppose assume that this is what you have written in c then it will eventually figure it out that what is the label which is being starting off with a 50 then the 50 it will go to the 50 line statement then it is what is going to be executed here now if you there is see there is a statement which is being written here go to one that means the 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 the, the, the control will again transform to the step number 1 itself then the next point is the global data can be accessed and can be modified from any part of the program and hence posing a serious threat to its veracity that means what it is trying to tell here is that so if you declare or if any global variable is being declared in a in this kind of a monolithic programming then what eventually will happen is that so any part of the program which is having the access to the global variable can ultimately change the state of it so for an example suppose you have defined a global variable called as the integer and you are performing something so let's called at a certain point of time so you have initialized the in, in, in the initial global variable to in dot mean or maybe in dot max so in such a cases what will happen so this integer variable is going to contain the minimum value which the programming language defines or it may so when you are going to use in dot max then it is what is going to hold the maximum value which the respective c language has been defined so that is what it is going to pose a threat to the veracity veracity means is what trust your dns that means how can we trust the global variable which is going to be accessed by 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 the entire program itself then then so it is basically suitable for small and simple application so basically you know so let's call some calculation some calculation kind of a problem or those programs which are going to monitor something whether something is being happening or not so essentially it is nothing but a whenever we need to develop any kind of a small program and very simple application then the monolithic program is being usually being preferred so one of the example of the monolithic program is being called as the basic so the, when there was being you know cobol was being there so basic was being treated as the one of the programming language where they were used to study this so any any questions on this on the monolithic programming any questions no sir okay very good then we will move on to the structured programming so as a part of the structured programming essentially the programming task has been splitted up into a smaller sections so those smaller sections are being called as the functions so in the context of a c we call it as a, a function but if you have heard about some some language like let's call the pascal or so then in that programming language it is what has been called as the subroutine so that means you know the entire so let's call as we have seen in case of a monolithic programming where entire thing is being written into a single function but in case of a the structured programming the entire task or the task which has been undertaken for which the program has been written so it has to be developed or it has to be splitted up into either in the functions or in the form of a subroutine and which can be called at any point of time as per the need or as per the necessity so it is often associated with a 
top down approach to design so top down means is what so we will start from the top then we will go towards the bottom what is the bottom of bottom up means is what you will start from the bottom then do you know during the course of the time you will go towards the bottom itself so that is these are being the one which is follows the opposite one top down means it will start from the top go towards the bottom then the bottom up means it will start from the leaf or from the bottom then slowly it will go towards the opposite so basically the structure programming one is associated with a top down approach itself while it comes to the design aspect of it then it attempts to divide the problem into smaller blocks or the procedure which is going to interact with each other so as i said before so let's call if you have created the function called as the input or maybe the display then main function is the one which is being primarily responsible to do the interaction with the function called as the input or with the display itself and the primary aim is to basically define the structure of the program before writing the code itself so that is why the pascal and the c which is being the and you know so the c is the one which you have already studied so when i was doing my btech i have studied pascal as well as with the c itself okay then the third one is being called as the procedure oriented programming one so in the procedure oriented programming work it is basically consisting of the writing a list of the instruction for the computer to follow and then organizing this instruction into groups which is being known as a function itself so relatively so this is what we are trying to do so the structure programming is the one so essentially what we are trying to do over here here we are writing the function and also with the subroutine and in the procedure oriented one here also we are giving emphasis into the function itself so the primary objective of the procedure oriented programming one is to have multiple number of function so that is why the primary the focus is on the function itself then some of the examples of the procedure oriented programming are being called as the cobol or with the fortran itself so that means till this point of time we have discussed the three programming paradigm first we have discussed what is meant by the monolithic then the second we have discussed what is meant by the structured programming then the third which we have discussed is being called as a, a procedure oriented programming then what you will do so let's yes sir i have doubt sir yes go ahead so what sir why c programming cannot be sir considered to be in a monolithic programming sir in the c program so usually when we are going to write any c program the intention is that we wanted to break up the task into multiple sub task so when the entire step or the entire task is being going to be you know divided or going to be split up into the multiple sub task then each of the sub task can be written up with the functions okay is this clear yes usually when when we are going to write a c program so let's call you have been asked to do the matrix addition multiplication subtraction and division okay so do so in that point of time would you prefer to write each and everything into the main function or would you prefer to write let's call it a function which will take the input of the two matrix would you write a another function which is going to sum the two matrices another function to multiply two matrices another function to do the division of the matrices then finally you need to write a another function which is going to display the result of the addition subtraction multiplication and also with the division this is what is the approach that you usually takes in the form of a c isn't it yes sir okay so for a bad reason itself that is what it is being called as a, a structured programming that means we basically structure means is what we basically follow some kind of a top down approach top down top down approach means we'll first think of the main function then from the main function what are the different function that we need to call up so let's call from the main function i may call up a input function so in the input function i may still 
divided into two two function called as input for matrix one, input for matrix two. Similarly, for the addition, so the addition may takes two argument. So the base address of the first matrix, the base address of the second matrix. Okay, then it will do the the addition and it is going to return back the result to the caller. Or the in the or subsequently what will happen? Post to the addition, you can still call a display function. So the display function will just scan through the entire matrix and it is going to just display the data. That is why it is what has been called as a a top down approach to the design of a specific one. Okay, am I clear? Yes, I got it, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Then a bit of more explanation into the procedure oriented programming one. So in the procedure oriented programming one, what we have discussed, we have primarily discussed that the catch point into the procedure oriented programming are nothing but the function. So that is why you can see here the main program is being over here. This main program is eventually. Calling the function one, function two, and also with the function three. Then the function one is being calling function four. Then the function four is being calling the function six. So this is just a you know visual depiction to let you understand that how the functions are being interacting with each other. For an instance, the function two it basically interacts with function four. It interacts with the function five as well as it interacts with the function seven itself. Okay, so is the diagram is being clear? Is the diagram is clear to yes, everyone? Sir. Yes. Okay. Then we will go something called as a procedure oriented programming paradigm. So in the procedure oriented programming paradigm, so the primary emphasis has been given onto the algorithms. That means in a way. so we will so when the dsa i mean discussion will goes on you will come to know what is meant by the time complexity and what will be meant by the space complexity so as a part of the procedure oriented programming one so you will be given focus on to writing the algorithm in such a way so that the time complexity is going to be as minimal as possible then the larger programs are basically being divided into smaller programs which is being called as the functions so most of the functions are going to share the global data okay so if the picture the picture if you can see it over here there are two global data which has been this which has been which is being here these two global data are being shared with the function one along with the function two and also with the function three and in turns each of the function is having their local data and this local data is not exposed to any other function so that means the local data which is being defined within the function one it is not exposed to the function two and it is not exposed to the function three similarly the local data which is being defined in the function two it cannot be it, it is not exposed to the function one and it is not exposed to the function three itself okay then the data move openly around the system from a function to a function that means what we are trying to do so let's call this local data suppose has to be used in function two so in such a cases what we will do so we need to write the function two in such a way so that this local data can go to function two as an argument So that is what it is been telling that the data can move openly around the system from a function to a function. So basically, so when we are going to write the function which is going to take argument, then it is what is going to move move freely within the within itself. Then function transform data from one form to a another one. Say for an example. suppose you are going to check whether the matrix which has been given so whether it is it is being when you do a transform then the transfer of the matrix will be equals to the original matrix or not so in this case what you will do you will write up a function which will take a, a the base address of the array the number of rows number of columns but the return type is going to be bool 
that means we are just going to check or you are just going to return the whomsoever is going to call the function you just need to let them know that the, the matrix which has been input to your function whether the matrix is being equals to the transpose of the matrix or not so that is what it is being telling that from one form to another form so basically in the matrix in the function you have passed as the some integer but in terms it is what is going to return a boolean value itself then again it is what is going to employ a top down approach to in the program design itself so any questions on this no very good now we will go into the object oriented programming so in case of a object oriented programming what what i have given with a overview on this so the primary focus is being given on to the classes and also with the object so it essentially what it does it is going to treat the data in a as a critical element in the program development and it basically does not allow the the data to be to data to flow around within the system itself so same if some of the point you could not able to correlate it within your mind then what you will do when we will be jumping into unit 2 unit 3 we will having a more you know idea or concept our concept will be much more clear when we are going to making our further journey into the world of object oriented programming so it basically ties the data more closely to a function which is going to operate on it and it is going to protect it from the accidental modification from outside of the function so the second point the second option what it is trying to tell here is that so if you define some variable then we there is a provision by which we can make the variable either going to be updated or either going to be revived by from the outside of the function or we can protect the variable in such a way so that the outside world cannot alter it or cannot modify it Okay, so that we will come to know there are three access specifier are being there. The first access specifier is being called as the private. In such a cases, the the outside world cannot change the the variable or cannot modify it. Then second thing is being called as the protected. So in the protected, we will be discussing what is meant by the inheritance. Then how the derived classes can only change it. but the outside world cannot change it that is what we will also look at it then finally we will have a another access specifier which is being called as the public so when the variable is going to be defined under the public access specifier anyone can alter it or anyone can modify it so that is what we will be looking at it when we are going to study the concept of the inheritance itself then the object oriented programming basically allows the decomposition of a problem into number of entities which are being called as the object and then it is going to build the data functions around these object itself now say for an example suppose we wanted to come across with the class called as the class called as the bird okay then with the bird then what we will do whether the bird is being you know uh, Uh, whether the bird is being uh, let's call what is the color of the bird then we can identify some of the characteristics of the bird itself then we can define a object of the bird by calling it out let's call cow, crow is being one of the uh, bird then peacock is being the another bird and then eagle is being the another bird so that means the peacock eagle or those are being something called as the object out of it then the data of an object can be accessed only by the functions associated with that object and function of one object can access the functions of a another object itself so since i have not or since we have not discussed into the concept of the classes and object so just to 
just to you know make it clear that whenever a class has been created and subsequently an object has been created using the object we can call the function which is been defined within the class itself okay then the how the data and and the functions have been organized in case of a object oriented programming so that is what it has been seen here so you can see it so there are three objects are being here that is the object one then the object two object b then there the third one is being called as the object c the object is having some in, of some of the data then also it is having some functions similarly object b is having and object c is having so these are the object which can also communicate with each other so that means the message passing also can be done here or by by which means that means through the functions itself so that means the functions which has been defined or being associated to a specific object so it can does the communication with the other object via the functions okay so is it clear i mean do you or not clear the point what you have discussed is it clear so can you explain once more the last one sir i'm not clear about that sir Okay. So, how the the data and the functions are being organized in case of a object-oriented program paradigm? So, what it is trying to tell here is that so if a class has been defined and in this class we have defined the three object. That means this is the object A, this is an object B, and this is the object C. and we have earlier told that the object can also be able to communicate with each other so how the communication is going to happen among the object that communication is going to be happen with the uses of a functions which is being defined in the class itself so that is why you can see here the object a is having some data this data can be used by the functions which is being defined here and then if the communication has to be done between the object then those communication is going to be feasible or is going to be possible with the functions itself okay so this is the communication between the object a and then the b this is the communication between the object b then with the object c then this is what is being the communication between the object a and also with the object c here okay is it clear now yes sir got it sir okay then there are some uh, characteristics serving here so it is primarily emphasis on the data rather than procedure so in the structural programming what we have discussed that the primary focus has been given either into the functions or the subroutine or maybe onto the algorithm but here in this case the emphasis is being primarily given onto the data over the procedures then programs are being divided into some objects then the data structures are designed so that so that they are going to characterize the object itself then the functions that's going to operate on the data of an object they are going to be tied within the data structure itself so similarly some other characteristics are being there so then we have earlier we have studied something called as a, a top down approach isn't it but right now in case of a object oriented programming one so basically we follow the a a bottom up approach in the program design itself so some of the points you know so unless until i explain you by writing a classes and object we be won't be able to you know try to correlate it with respect to the programming language itself so that is why these points will be further clear when we are subsequently moving of moving into the classes and object itself then let's try to understand some of the basic concept here so the object oriented programming language it basically supports the mechanism to define to create to store and to manipulate the object and at the same time it allows the communication between the object itself so that is why we will just as a part of the unit 1 
so what you will do is we'll just try to understand the concept of classes the concept of objects then what is meant by the data abstraction what is meant by encapsulation what is inheritance then what is polymorphism what is meant by the dynamic binding then what is meant by the message passing and then the overloading so this is what these are the some new terms or let's call these are the some new jargons which we would like to study as a part of the unit 1 so but but the detailed discussion on this is going to happen in the subsequent sections so let's understand something called as a what is meant by a classes so a class is nothing but a user defined data types so we have already been covered up the structure in c so a structure in c is nothing but a user defined data types it is not a built in data types that means the structure is not built up builted up in the c so essentially what has been happened so we are going to create a structure for an example an employee structure employee then we will have some something into this for an example we will write something called as employee id employee name employee sex employee address employee pin code then employee salary so these are some of the field which we are going to define as a part of the employee structure to represent one entity of the employee itself so that is why so this is the structure is being called as a user defined data type that means as a programmer or as a j designer of the program we are essentially defining that what all fields must go into the structure itself so that is why it is what has been called as a user defined data type so similarly the class is also being a user defined data types we need to just to provide that what all value what all variable should be part of the class and what all function to be defined within the class itself then a class is nothing but a collection of the data from the and the member function so what is a data member data member means it is nothing but the variables which is going to be defined within the class itself the way we are being writing the variable or declaring the local variable within the function by writing so let's called int i int j or int k similarly so when those kind of a variable which is going to be defined within the class then that is what is been called as a a that that a member then what is a member function the member function is nothing but the function which is being defined within the class is being called as a member function itself okay so let me just write it down a very simple code on this so let's call suppose in c in c we used to write something called as a employee here then we used to write something called as id then something called as name then let's call something called as p and then then we are going to write something called as six isn't it so let's call this is what is the structure that we are going to define within the within this itself now the same thing so this is what is being a user defined data types which we have already seen in case of a c itself suppose you have to create some other one then what you will do so i'm going to write e1 or let's called e2 or let's called e3 so let's call three as being have been defined over here itself so this is what we have defined it then what you can do if i have to assign some values to it we can write e1 dot id is something which we are going to write something called as so let's call like this okay similarly the rest of the things also can be written now in contrast to that then the class is going to be defined something like this class then employee then we need to define the access specify here so i will define something called as a private so that means when i'm going to define the access specifier as a private here that means those variables 
should not be exposed to the outside world that means when we go to create an object of this class h itself then we won't be able to uh, you know won't be able to <coughs> touch upon this data itself so let's let's call so this is the one which i have created and then let's call character six so let's call these are the one which you have created in this one in this class itself then what we write so this is what has been called as your data member then i am going to define some of the functions here so let's call i am going to define some functions here so let's call i will write something called as void input then in this case we will write something called as c out enter id then we will write c in then id similarly we can write it for the other one so like we will write something called as a integer let's call sex here then we will write something called as a the sex here okay then this is what is going to be the closure of this so this is what is been called as your member functions okay so this is what it is trying to tell so it is nothing but a data member and the member function itself variables are defined in a class called as the data member and the function define the class are being known as the member functions objects are nothing but the variables of type class once a class has been defined so we can we can create uh, we can create any number of object belonging to this class itself so so with a pictorial depiction what we can see so let's call this is what is being we have written up a a class here which is being called as the car here then while we are going to define or going to create the object then what the objects are going to be the mercedes is going to be a type of a car itself so one object which you have created is being called as the mercedes then the second object which is which you have created is being of type bmw so the blue one is being representing a object of type class called as car here similarly the audi is the one which is being a another object of type called class called as the car here so each object is being associated with the data type of a class which they are being created so now let me just try to showcase you on how the employee has been created here so let's call employee is the one which i have created so i have created something called as the employee of kit similarly we can create a employee something called as let's called an high radius is the organization itself then employee which we can create it for something called as a amazon okay so in this case what it has been done the e underscore kit is being representing an object of type employee similarly e underscore high radius is representing a object which is of type called as employee then third one e underscore amazon is being representing an object which is of type called as the employee here so the pictorial depiction which has been shown here in the similar fashion that is what we have been created here itself then what it is telling that if a car has been defined as a class then the statement car mercedes then the car bmw and then the car audi is an object which is belonging to the class called as the car here so basically it basically follows a logical structure here okay so any questions on this any questions on this classes yes sir so the program that you have written earlier in the uh, notepad sir can you explain that once more sir so the program which you have written over here in this program what you have done we have just created a class called as the employee in this employee class we have created two local two variable so those two variable are being called as the id and also being called as the sex here and this is what has been defined under a access specifier which is being called as the private 
so the private access specifier means if the data is not going to be exposed to the outside world that means what so using e underscore kit so let's call it like this e underscore kit dot id i cannot give so this is what will raise a error here similarly using e underscore high radius we cannot access the sex here so this will be then select called mail then this is what it is also going to give an error here so in this case what we need to do how this can do to do this we can do something called as e underscore amazon dot input so this input function that we can do it assume that so this input function is being defined under the public access specifier then we can call it e underscore amazon dot input itself so what we are trying to tell here once we define a class here then we can create an object of type kit we can create of type high radius then also we can create of type amazon itself so since the id and the sex are being expected to not to be exposed to the outside world that means using the object we cannot access it so if it has to be accessed then we need to define a function under the public access specifier which we is going to read the data from the input then it is going to store it into the respective variables or respective member variable am i clear yes sir got it sir okay so this is what is being another example of classes here so you can see this is the animal the animal is nothing but a class here then the objects of animal classes so what are the object lion is being one object elephant is being another object giraffe is being another object deer is the another object and what is this i do not i don't know is it a fox right or is it a dog what this is dog sir then this is what is being representing a another one itself so similarly so let's call we have defined a class which is being called as the student and this student is having the characteristics of let's called name then this is what is being having a characteristics of called as age then something called as a registration number assume that so this is what is being representing a girl student in kit university so that means in such a cases we can define as many as number of object so the first object which can be an the second object may be emily the third object may be kathy then the fourth object can be mansha here so each of this object 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 are going to have their own name going to have their own age and going to have their own registration number as well then one more example has been given over here so let's call this is what has been represented as a fruit which is going to be represented as a class here then we do have the pineapple then we have the orange here then we have this is something called as the green color i don't know then this is what has been called as a, a banana here so in this case the fruit is being becoming a class and these are the one which is being represented as a as the object here let's call this is what is being a, a green apple and this is what is being the orange here okay so is this clear on this example on the classes yes sir so yes sir as we, uh, as you have told the data member so i understand that of the data member but i am not able to understand the member function so so the member function is nothing but a function which is been defined within the class itself so that means if you go to c so let's call this one structure in the structure we cannot define any function so let's call can i write any function here no sir the c does not allow right isn't it c does not allow that to define any function within the structure but the c++ allows that a class can have the definition of a function so if there is a function which is being associated to a class then this function is being called as a member function because this input is being a function which is being a member of the class so that is why it is what has been called as a member function 
So is it clear now? Yes, sir, it is clear. And sir, this we will learn in a C lab class, no? Uh, this is what we will be learning it when we will be jumping into the classes and object, and of course in the lab as well. Okay, sir. Thank you, sir. then objects so objects are nothing but the basic runtime entities in the object oriented system the way you create a variable during the runtime isn't it so basically during the runtime how do you create the variable so let's call suppose i have written something a then you write something called as malloc then size of something let's call it i am going to multiply with this thing so this is what you are going to create it on the runtime isn't it this is what is going to be that means a runtime this is what has been done so similarly the objects are nothing but representing the runtime entities within a object oriented system itself then second point it is telling that they may represent a person a place a bank account etc etc so the object take up the space in the memory and have an associated address like a structure in c and when a program is executed the objects are essentially interact with each other by sending the messages to one another so in the example what you have seen these are the three object with the pictorial depiction what you have seen so with the uses of the member functions the objects are going to be interact with each other similarly every object have the data structure which is being called as the attributes and the behavior which is being called as the operations so that means the attribute means the attribute means a simple example which has been given here so let's call suppose we wanted to have an account so that means we are going we are having accounts in our banks so in such a cases my attributes related to the account is going to be my account number then my account type whether it is saving account or a recurring account or what kind of account so that is that there are two or three or four different account types are going to be there then finally what is going to be the name that is what is the name which is going to be associated to the account then the one most important thing is that the balance that means currently what is the balance this account is having then this is what has been called as the attributes then something called as the behavior behavior means so let's call it if you are having an account then you will be going to to any atms to deposit money to withdraw money and also to the enquiring money so just checking that so in my account at this point of time what is the amount that my account is currently having okay. so this is what is being the difference between the attributes and also with the behavior so only one thing which we need to make a note out of here is that the class is being nothing but a logical structure that means it is logically exist that means if you write an if you written a class and when you run it the memory will not be alloc allocated for the class the memory will be allocated only when the objects are being getting created you know getting created so that is why so the object is being treated as a physical that means the memory is being actually allocated to the object not to the respective class itself so is the point is clear to everyone yes sir clear sir okay then how can we represent an object here okay so this is one way to represent an object here so let's call this is what is this is a object which is going to which is of type account then these are being the attributes which we have already discussed in the previous example called as the account number account time name and the balance and this is what is been called as the the behavior behavior means this is the deposit withdraw and then the account this is one way so basically this is what you will be studying in software engineering this is what is been called as the a class diagram then 
there is a another way which we can represent it with a circular fashion so the outer periphery are going to represent the something called as the behavior and then the inner one is going to represent the attributes am i clear so is this clear the pictorial depiction which has been shown here is this clear yes sir the next one is let's understand what is meant by the data abstraction so the data data abstraction is that you are going to provide only essential information to the outside world and hiding their background details that means to represent the needed information in a program without representing the details okay say for an example okay so if you ask a a, a male person what is your salary they will be reluctant to disclose in the similar fashion if you ask any female that what is your age then they also will be reluctant to disclose so that is my that is why in case of a female the age is being considered as some kind of a hidden things which should not be exposed to the outside world similarly in the case of a male so the i mean the, the i mean the amount that they are being drawing so that is what they wanted to keep it hidden or they do not wanted to disclose it so that is what is being the concept is all about data abstraction so that means only the essential information need to be exposed to the outside world and some of the important parameters or some of the important entities may be hidden let's take up another example so a tv so which you can turn up and also you can turn up then you can also change the channel you can also adjust the volume and at the same time we can also add some external component such as let's call the speakers the dvd players or maybe the vcds but you do not know the internal details like whenever you are pressing the key let's call the volume key how does the volume is getting increase or let's call suppose you wanted to you know change the channel then how come just pressing of a button the channel is being getting changed that is why these are being basically some of the internal details and we do not know how it receives signals over the air or maybe through a cable or how it is going to do the translation then finally how it is going to reflect into the tv screen itself so thus we can say that a television basically clearly separates its internal implementation from its external interface and we can play only with the interface like power button or the challenge or the channel changer or the volume control without having the zero knowledge of it internal so this is a another example which has been given over here so in this one what has been given so let's call suppose we have contact we have received this information so the full name then the address contact number then the tax information these are being the one which we have which we have been collected along with the favorite food my favorite movie my favorite actor and my favorite band so when you will be going into bank okay so the bank neighbor asks this kind of thing that means the one which is being represented in the red color one so that means the bank does not need all this customer information for their business itself but the bank essentially need to know your name then your on their address and then your contact number and also your tax information the tax the tax information but they will be never ask you this kind of a things itself okay so with this i am stopping now because the time is 4 o'clock so we will catch up again on the next week to discuss on the data encapsulation encapsulation so i presuming that by end of the i mean by by next class will be done with the unit number 1 so before we wind up any questions no sir before we wind up any questions
ओके नो क्वेश्चन थैंक यू वेरी मच थैंक यू सर